Hopefully everyone can see me. Hello all. Um, I'm going to get started because we've got a lot to get through and only an hour or so to, uh, to get through it all. I don't want to keep you any longer than I have to. So let's get straight into the, the detail. And we are talking today, of course, about music and just a little bit about me. My name's Dave Dowling. I'm the support and training coordinator at Music Ednet and I've been supporting and training music software users in education for about 12 years or so, give or take, and not slowing down anytime soon. So at the end of uh, today's session, if you've got any questions or queries that don't get answered in the chat, uh, Keith is monitoring the chat window, so we'll try and get to all of you if we can. Um, yeah, do get in touch with us uh, via phone or email, and we'd love to have a chat with you about cloud subscriptions like Soundtrap, etc., um, or anything else to do with music technology, uh, right up to your performing arts theatre or possibly your video mixing system if you want to uh, get involved with something like this that I'm using today. So that might seem a bit overwhelming, um, but there are simpler solutions and we can certainly help out with all of that stuff as well. All right, so the, uh, the first thing I want to cover, we'll go through a bit of an agenda as to, to all the things I'm going to talk about today in a moment. Um, but the first thing I want to clarify uh, for all of you is exactly what music is and where it fits in the scheme of things. So the, uh, the first thing to clarify is that it's not a score editor. Okay, um, it has some similarities, uh, but it's not Sibelius or Dorico or, or trying to be anything uh, like those uh, particular applications. It exists in its own space. So what it is, is a online platform for PDF sheet music organisation and most importantly interaction. Okay, we'll clarify more as we go. And separately, music education, it's all part of the same, the same product, uh, but music education is a, uh, what, you, what you would subscribe to as a school, and that includes special features for uh, music educators, uh, ensemble leaders and performers. Um, that uh, have particular use in the, the education space and you'll see some of those emerge as we go. So, why have, indeed, a special app for organising and interacting with PDF sheet music files uh, when you might perceive that uh, Windows File Explorer or the Mac Finder can work with uh, PDFs just fine and you can just open them in Adobe? So, let's answer that now. Uh, for one thing, it's going to keep all of your uh, music PDF files in the one secure place, uh, like a single purpose filing cabinet, uh, but much more useful than that, it's available anywhere. So it holds your whole library online, so it's always accessible, no matter where you are. Okay, And the services that it provides uh, for sheet music interaction, once you've got your, your PDF library online, or at least a good portion of it that you use often, um, First and foremost, a uh, clean interface for easy reading and page turning. Okay, so this is the bit I can't uh, convey enough perhaps, is that the uh, philosophy behind this app is to uh, get you to go digital with your sheet music. So uh, get your sheet music onto devices, onto your iPads or your bigger screen at home, etc. Um, and start reading from the screen rather than from the page and having a much more convenient uh, platform and, and access arrangement for dealing with your sheet music. Even that tiny little uh, bookshelf you see behind me uh, that has uh, you know, a few dozen books of scores that I've purchased over the years, um, it takes me ages to find what I'm looking for sometimes. It's really frustrating. Uh, as soon as I started working with music, I've slowly been um, getting a lot of that old stuff scanned into my uh, uh, my scanner and turned into PDF format and I'm enjoying working with it and accessing it a lot faster and more easily than ever before. Okay, so I might do a little demonstration of this at this juncture, so it's not just my uh, talking head and PDF slides. So let me switch to the music interface. So what we're looking at now, this is the music web interface. So it's running in Google Chrome at the moment and I've got another couple of instances running in uh, Microsoft Edge and one in Firefox, just so I can show some uh, student and teacher uh, accounts running as well. And the little spinning box you see at the top here, uh, this indicates that we are in the teacher account at the moment. 
and there'll be uh, a few instances where I have to differentiate between the two. So when I switch to a student account, for instance, you'll see the spinning box at the top change to a student account. And if I shuffle one over on my video switcher again, here's another student account and we'll talk about the, uh, the differences between those. So back in the teacher account though, and we're talking about uh, just page turning to start with. So if we open up one of these scores, let me bring up one that has a, uh, a few pages in it. And this one's got a few nice ones in it. And let's bring up the Bolero. This is a few pages long for the guitar arrangement at least. So the first thing you'll, you'll notice here is we get a full page view. There's the option to, to fit to width uh, if you're on a, a smaller device for instance and want to see uh, all of that in fine detail. So uh, full page view though for now and if I click this option over here um, we'll get two pages wide. So if you've got a 21 inch screen or bigger um, that's generally fine to show uh, a full set of pages. So if I move this uh, box out the way here this little expansion arrow will just get rid of my uh, parts view and some other information on the right hand side. And if I also uh, use my F11 shortcut on the keyboard for Windows or Control Command F on Mac if you're in, a, in Chrome or Safari on the Mac, F11 will send your browser into full screen. Okay, and we should find now, oops, as I'm moving the mouse around, uh, you'll just see this information pop up at the, uh, at the bottom there. But if I just click on that to get rid of it and use my arrow keys on the keyboard, I've got another view here. Da, 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 there it is. All right, um, we can shuffle through the pages that way, okay? And uh, it also supports, um, because I know you're immediately thinking, well, that's great, but uh, when I'm standing on stage performing, uh, working with uh, a keyboard and a, a pair of keys while I've got my trumpet you know, and uh, hands occupied is not gonna be much good. So it supports um, Bluetooth uh, controllers as well. I'll show this one, there we go. Okay, that's going to pair to my iPad, I think now, um, but it will pair uh, to your, if you pair it to your Windows device or Mac, uh, full size Mac, it's going to uh, work just as well with Music Web. And you can click through, of course, with the mouse as well, but it's a, a bit more cumbersome. But let me quickly switch to the iPad though, and we'll just show a couple of, uh, a couple of tricks on this because um, some of the, the page turning uh, benefits on the, the iPad app um, as separate to Music Web that runs in a web browser, um, there is a specific app that gets installed on the, uh, the iPad itself. So it's got a bit more power, a few more features to work with and a bit more flexibility with how it deals with page turning. Uh, so let me just jump out of this score, which is only a lowly one page long. Uh, here we go, it remembers I've opened this previously. So let's go back into the same score. Now what you'll see first of all, is in my iPad over here, um, I've got uh, the iPad in landscape mode and its orientation. So if I click to the, uh, the right or tap on the right of the iPad or swipe right, either way, um, what it does is gives this little arrow, I'll just go back once again, have a look over here uh, where my finger's pointing and you'll see a little orange arrow up here that then fades away. And that just indicates that we're in the, uh, the bottom half of the page in question. All right, so in the, uh, the bottom half of this page, and then if I swipe again, uh, we'll be in the top half of the next page, swipe again, bottom half of that same page, and swipe again, and then we'll get to the, the end of the score in this case. I think that'll then just show us there's nothing else happening after that final bar line. All right, um, so that's all well and good, and of course this works uh, if I demo the, the Bluetooth controller. Now, is that visible, and is it working? There we go. All right, so up she goes. Page, 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 back, back, back. Hopefully you've uh, seen this sort of thing in action with other apps before, but generally very, very useful. So if I just work with the iPad in portrait mode or vertical orientation for a moment though, I'm just gonna reshuffle things in front of the camera here so I can show you how this works because it's got a pretty cool feature that's worth, certainly worth demonstrating. Okay, so I think that's everything. Now, um, if I just uh, do the same thing we did before, so we're now on page one of the score, uh, swipe to the right, same thing happens, but now we're obviously seeing uh, the whole page, whereas before we were only getting about half of it on the uh, horizontal uh, orientation. So that's all well and good, 
same thing seeing the whole page but if I just tap on the score I'll just shuffle it down so you can see this and up here you'll get your little familiar uh, three dot menu oops no oh, if I get there in time there we go so I tap on that and then we get all these options so one of them is page turn down the bottom here and if I turn on half page turn let's have a look at what happens so I'm probably going to give the game away a bit by scrolling back but starting on page one all right uh, looking at all of page one that's fine we can read through it if I just show you everything on the camera but if I swipe once we now see over on the uh, top half of the, the iPad uh, the first half of page two and we're seeing the last half of page one in the lower half so that's still there so imagine you're reading through uh, these lines and you've clicked ahead so that you can then uh, being the clever reader you are read ahead this top line and be ready for it when you turn the page proper or well, you might already be into it before you even bother turning the page again uh, just to reveal what's coming next and then we'll get what's on the last page uh, not quite everything in this case so still beneficial to have that option to swipe again or tap again and just reveal everything or of course um, do it on your Bluetooth control so you can see those pages tapping through Oops, as I squeeze the, the pedals on that. All right, so that's it for the basic page turning functionality. Uh, let me just go back to the slides for a second. Moving right along. It supports Bluetooth controllers, we talked about that. And uh, access to scores um, is available individually or as part of a, a project or uh, set list. So it's uh, not just a big list of all your scores, um, there are specific ways in which you can organise them and set lists and projects are, uh, are what those are about. Um, projects in particular enable easy distribution of score parts to your, uh, your various band members uh, using the music education platform. Okay, um, the uh, benefits of this of course lead to hopefully less of this kind of business. All right. So while I'm not a classroom music teacher myself, I've done a bit of classroom teaching in the, uh, the technology uh, field, but I have sat in on a, uh, a lot of um, music lessons with music teachers uh, while, while helping them out with uh, various tech solutions or troubleshooting things, that kind of business. And one of the things I always notice is how many uh, kids turn up without their music or you know they've lost it or they've got the wrong music or whatever it might be. So hopefully, Going digital is a, a good way for you guys to uh, get over some of those hurdles and get band rehearsals happening and uh, uh, productive uh, much faster and for longer. All right, so there's a searchable library, so that's pretty standard for anything uh, that involves files. So you can text search and, and find what you need pretty quickly. Um, the capacity to mark up scores, this is uh, really important. So there's annotations that you can add to your scores, particularly uh, on the iPad side, and you can blast those uh, annotations out to everyone that's viewing the same score that's part of the same project. So we'll, uh, we'll certainly demonstrate and talk about that. It uh, is pretty powerful stuff, the, uh, the fact that you can, can mark up something exactly the way you expect to mark it up and not rely on everyone else to do it the same way um, with their own pencils on their own scores, etc and then recover the same score and then all of that stuff we just talked about on the previous page uh, comes into play. All right, so there is also a fantastic uh, MIDI to Music XML uh, conversion from a PDF file uh, feature inside this application. Um, so it's a uh, optical music uh, recognition algorithm, um, but it works very differently to uh, the usual players uh, like Photoscore, etc. Um, in the sense that it is based on machine learning uh, first and foremost um, and it's it's super impressive so I'll certainly show you some examples of that and uh, this then allows you of course to turn the score into an XML file or a, a MIDI file to bring into Sibelius or something else and uh, edit freely um, in any way you need to. Alright, um, you can also pair media files and YouTube video links uh, to scores similar to, to what you can do in uh, Noteflight and some other applications. Um, and there is also the possibility to uh, sync page turns on the iPad app to this as well. It exists for the iPad app only, that feature at this stage, um, as do a number of things, um, but they are slowly catching up um, with MusicWeb. Um, it's uh, just two very different worlds developing for 
iOS or the iPad operating system as it's now called versus developing for Google Chrome or you know HTML5, that sort of thing. So a bit of cat and mouse um, that they're playing there, getting one thing up to speed with the other. All right, but it's, it's all happening. But certainly annotations that you add uh, on the iPad can certainly be seen in the web version. So uh, that in particular uh, is quite useful. So not everyone necessarily needs to have an iPad that's in the ensemble to make use of that. All right, so audio recording, uh, we can uh, record audio, like real audio from a microphone direct into any music score. And what they've recently added as well is the capacity to multi-track. So along with the live score and uh, from the optical music uh, algorithm, etc., that you'll get inside as a playback feature, like a multi-channel MIDI uh, playback track, um, you'll also get the capacity to record multiple audio tracks and uh, play them all back at once if you want to. So there's uh, a lot of scope for um, you know, student collaboration and uh, you know, doing uh, multi-channel uh, band recording examples with everyone working remotely and adding their part to a particular score, etc. Some pretty useful things I think you can imagine doing with that. All right, so let's have a look at these and uh, do a few demonstrations. Here we go. Um, so talking about set lists first of all, just quickly because there's not that much to them, they're pretty simple. Um, here's one I've prepared earlier and we're a bit down into it because we pinched uh, the bolero from there earlier. Um, but these are basically just a, a list of um, files that you've brought into music, um, organised any way you like and super easy to rearrange. So if I drag and drop um, I can move them around any way I like. A lot easier than a piece of paper uh, written on with texture, I'm sure you'll agree. All of these will go to the file in question when you click on them. So if I wanted to start from uh, the third one down the list, uh, we get this. Oh look, I've done a score analysis on that one. Something to differentiate between the, uh, the iPad app and the, where are we? Uh, I'm going to show my uh, um, talking head when I'm looking at it this way, um, between the iPad app and the uh, music web version uh, is when you're dealing with set lists uh, in the music web, you do need to go back to go to the next one, all right? Whereas in the iPad app, there will be a little, if I go back to that one again, or something different. Um, in the iPad app, there'll be a little two-way arrow down here that lets you just click along to the next one to get there that way. Just a little bit more convenient. But that's really all there is to it for a, a set list. So they just need to be scores that exist in your library and you just come up here and make a new one and it will prompt you uh, whether you want to add from the library or add from files. So if you add from files, it'll bring up a, uh, where are we? Let's go to my desktop and show you something I prepared earlier. So if I wanted to add uh, some of these files, for instance, um, I could select one or more of them and they would get dumped into the, the set list and into the music library automatically at the same time. Um, or you can pick ones that are already there. Um, if you share one with this share option here, it will give you a link that you can share with your students, etc. And uh, they uh, follow that link and then all of those scores will be brought into their account as well. Uh, so pretty Pretty helpful and a bit, bit beyond the, uh, the average set list you may be used to. Uh, so let me pop back to our slides again for a second. Excellent. So projects and one-to-many distribution. Uh, so this is uh, where we start to, to see some of the, uh, uh, the power of music education uh, come to the fore. So by uh, inviting uh, or just adding users in the case of music edu education, inviting is more uh, about music in the global um, sphere, if you like, and inviting people from anywhere to a project. Um, but within your walled garden education environment, you would be in control of it as the teacher. And then we can have a look at marking up scores within a, uh, a project and uh, looking at how uh, markup layers work and how the, uh, the student experience um, with interacting with that, uh, that annotation uh, actually looks and works. So, back we are. All right, so here's a project. Hopefully it holds this time. Fingers crossed. And I might just jump out of full screen there. Maybe that was upsetting it a little bit. We'll see. Um, now, uh, let's go into uh, no, let's not go into a project. Let's show how easy it is to create one first and foremost. 
Um, so what I'm going to do first, when you when you make a new project, uh, let's make one and call it Funk, and I'll drag some funky tracks into it. Now the uh, important uh, it's important to note when you're making a new project in the music education environment, uh, you will need to select your school as the organisation uh, that the project's going to apply to. So in our case, our school is called the Music Ednet Demo. Uh, so for you, it might be, uh, you know, Brighton Grammar or uh, Seaford Secondary or wherever you might be. Um, so let's go create project and here we go. It's got nothing in it at the moment. Uh, now I can't add uh, pieces from, oh no, it does let me add them from a file now. I didn't think it did that. I reckon they've changed that only in the last few weeks uh, to allow you to do exactly what I showed before uh, from a set list. So you see the updates come thick and fast in Cloud World. And uh, let's go to desktop and one I prepared earlier. Where's the funky ones? Here they are. So we'll grab that and chuck it all in. Drag and drop. All right, so that's just a, uh, um, oh, no, sorry, I shouldn't drag and drop because I'm not actually in a separate Explorer window. I have to open down here. Now, this is asking me, do I want to group these 12 files into a single piece um, or do I want to gather them as part of the, uh, the same piece? Uh, okay, so in this case, uh, I'm going to uh, group them all as a single piece and I'll show you why in a moment. So I'll say group, and let's say Dave wrote it. I'll pretend I did. And up it goes. So it's just going to load those PDF files up into music. So as long as you've got reasonable internet, this isn't going to take very long. Okay, that's finished. And here we have uh, the beginnings of my project. Now, if I go into that and show you, we'll just reveal these options on the right-hand side. Um, we've gone into one score, but all of the parts of the score are listed down here on the right-hand side. So if I select one of these and click on it, you'll see it just loads up that particular part. So all of your various uh, parts for your students uh, all there and uh, a, any student that's working on a particular part can just come into the same project uh, click on the part that they need to work on uh, or read from um, if it's uh, ensemble practice etc um, or performance indeed and uh, and work with it from there um, so when it comes to annotations I'll just show you quickly this really basic uh, comment mode uh, that exists in music web so if I click on this little pencil icon uh, up here over on the uh, top right, and let's just click somewhere. Was I already in comment mode? Yes, I did enable it. There we go. So I just click somewhere, and I can say something like, "Is all right." Save that, and that comment will then appear um, on a uh, student copy uh, that's working in Music Web and vice versa if they made a similar comment wanted to ask about something in the score and, and let you know where exactly where it is um, that, that's how it will turn up so when you click on it uh, because I made it it's giving me the option to um, to change it uh, or delete it um, but if we have a look let me share this project with uh, where are we if I go back to Yep, there we go. And oh, something I didn't do, and it's a good opportunity to point out forgetting things. I need to go back one step. And oh, this is what I need, sorry. Correct. Here we go. So add members is what we need to do. And I'm going to add, let's add student one and student two is down here somewhere the two student accounts I've got open in the, uh, the other browser windows that I'm using. And now we can switch over to the student account and have a look at the uh, different experience. So, oh, there I am again in the corner. So uh, here's the, uh, the first student account I've got ready to go. And because I added them, I remember uh, I added them as members in the, in the project setup, we have 
uh, the same project will turn up in the student account here. So here it is. And it says it's only got one piece, but it doesn't know that we've got all these different parts for the students to choose from that are all related to the same piece. And you can see in here, the student can see that comment I've made. Okay, so that can be uh, any kind of back and forth communication you need. All right. Um, but if I switch over to the, uh, the iPad quickly, and the iPad is showing the teacher account and the, yeah, everything is on here and I just need to go into so back home and let's go into uh, in the iPad app you'll see projects and set list etc down the bottom uh, rather than in the uh, the right hand column so I'll click on projects and here's the one I just created and I'll go into that one as the teacher all right and let me just scroll in. You notice that the um, uh, this is uh, the bass guitar score once again. So I'll pick the first one from the list just to make it easy. And you do access the different parts by the menu at the top uh, when you're looking at a project on the iPad app versus uh, Music Web in a web browser. All right. Let's move my camera on over a bit so I don't get lost in the in the view. So if I now, uh, but do do notice though that that web. Um, music web comment isn't showing up in here. Uh, I do believe that's something that music are, are working on uh, that will be uh, cross compatible between the iPad and the uh, music web version soon enough, um, as will other things. So one of the things that's pretty cool though is that everything I do when I touch this little pencil icon here in the iPad app, we get the capacity to just draw freely um, anywhere we like on the, on the PDF file. So if for instance, um, I want to say, uh, you know, perhaps this, this note here, you know, we've decided that that's wrong and uh, it should have been sharp. Oops, I'll just choose one of these options here and hold my iPad steady and I can just draw that in, all right? Uh, or if I know that it's going to be sharp, I can go over into the uh, little symbols icon over here, symbols icon area and pick the sharp symbol and just pop that. Um, where it needs to go. Oops. Well, maybe I need to move it a bit. If I hold my finger over it, it lets me uh, uh, find the position a bit more easily. But it did add an another one. So I'm going to click on the eraser over here and just delete that one. Okay. Um, but you might find, I think, if you've got an Apple Pencil and an iPad Pro in particular, and uh, it's uh, quite a bit of screen real estate and finite control over what you're um, putting on the screen, uh, I think uh, a lot of you would find drawing uh, on the score, um, yeah, far more, uh, you know, organic, I suppose is the right word for it. Um, people are always talking about, you know, wanting a, a perfect score writing app that, uh, uh, you know, allows you to handwrite in. And many of them have tried, and they do well in some ways, but never do well in all ways. And uh, quite replace the, uh, the sheet of paper in that sense. Um, but all of these things now, um, and maybe there's a, oh, that's an interesting vibrato. Maybe there's some uh, um, extra things that you need to add to the score. Maybe you need to draw attention to these notes for some reason, whatever the case might be. Um, all we need to do now, uh, so I've uh, done this on the iPad. This would be the same whether you're a teacher or a student, etc., all working on the same project uh, in music education. Come up here and tap on the, uh, the account name. And in this case, you can see it's set to private at the moment. That means I'm the only one that's going to see it. Um, but if I drag to the right, uh, from right to left, sorry, um, and then choose this info option here, I can now turn it on Oops. and then give everyone the capacity uh, to share and wreck it and do whatever they like if I want to, uh, which I'm confident enough to do here. All right, and then uh, I don't have to tap the, the X icon here to get out of comment mode um, or indeed tap the pencil to go back into it. If I just double tap, the score with two fingers. Um, that gets me in and out of uh, annotation mode, basically. So I can do that to get back to, to where we need to be. All right, and if I just have a look, tap it once, uh, I just want to make sure it's synced. Uh, three minutes ago, I'll sync it again. Um, so if you're doing this uh, in real time uh, with your band, etc., um, you'd certainly want to uh, be just making sure that uh, it's synced after you've done something that you want uh, various performers to be able to see if they're looking at the same score. All right, um, so that one, if I come back over here and show you the student account once again, 
Uh, let's refresh the page and see what's going on. There we go. All right, so all that information is there. It's, uh, it's deceptively powerful, this, I think, the, uh, when you think about the fact that this could be going to, you know, 30 students at once if it's uh, some sort of um, learning arrangement where they're all reading from the same page. There's uh, all kinds of things that could, you know, save you lots of time. Now, just something to touch on briefly with this as well, if I go back to the iPad for a second, is layers. So if I, whoops, touch this uh, screen again here, notice that when I touch the account name here in the iPad, it mentions uh, that we're in a layer. Um, now, if I add another one with the little plus icon here, let's just call it layer two. All right, uh, now we've got uh, two independent layers and uh, because I'm working in layer two, it's grayed out everything that was in layer one. And I might just turn that off. So touch the little eyeball icon so I don't want to see it, it crosses it out. And I'll jump in here and now let's do something silly. You know, so we don't want to see this line. All right, and no, we don't want to see that line either. I really want you guys to focus on this line. Okay, this is the one we're having all the trouble with. So let's make sure we get it right today. You know, whatever you want to do. Okay, so um, let's say that's all good. I'll just touch once, whoops. Let's uh, erase that one. And I'll double tap to get out of this, this mode. And one single tap to get into uh, just the information about the score. And I'll touch the sync button just to make sure it syncs again. And let's have a look back in the student uh, score now. And there's a couple of things to to show. So once one is going to be, uh, of course, the fact that ooh, oh, I don't think I shared. So here we go. Important to share the layer. Um, still set to private. See. So if I come back in here, information, turn it on, turn it on. I'll just turn on both, just for the sake of the, the demonstration and. Tap out of that again, sync it once again. All right, synced, let's try again. Mm -hmm. Now, can you see something different? Um, if we look at the, uh, the iPad, we're not showing uh, the first layer with the red circle and the wavy lines, etc. But if we look at the student score, we are seeing all of those layers. So if I just move my talking head for a minute, Pop myself up here. Um, down here in the right hand column we've got a layers area and we've got that same little eyeball icon here and I can choose which ones I want to see and which ones I don't. Alright, so if I do disagree with, uh, with Mr Dowling and I want to work on a different line I can just hide all of that and say whatever. So um, if you can imagine a, a bunch of uh, different students or you know perhaps um, you know, a couple of teachers working on the same score um, adding different layers um, then you can choose sort of what things you want to show and in one of those scores I brought up earlier um, it was scanned in from a book where I'd, I'd written in the harmonic analysis uh, in pencil on the score itself so I can't get rid of that now without rubbing it out on the original and re-scanning it um, but if I'd done that in here um, I'd have a harmonic analysis that I can just switch on and off so pretty useful okay so I think that's probably enough on that subject but it's a, a pretty important one to be aware of. Yeah, that's everything uh, I think to uh, discuss in the short term regarding uh, projects and layers and annotation. So let me just move us along. Where are we? Here we go. Now, uh, the live score feature, which is super exciting. And I think you'll find a lot easier to deal with uh, than some of the other um, apps out there that do this kind of thing uh, because it really doesn't give you uh, much choice but to be an easy way to do it and it'll either do a good job or it won't and with standard notation scores it'll do a good job um, uh, struggles with uh, guitar tab and things like that at this point in time um, but uh, you know that's uh, something that uh, they'll be working on in the uh, in the future and things will always improve but for your traditional uh, fundamental uh, printed scores it does an excellent job so let me quickly show you a couple of these things and the resulting MIDI file and, uh, and XML export options. So you see up here in the, the information for the score I've got selected we've got a little option there that says convert to live score. I might just get one going in the background we'll see if it gets through it in the time that we're talking about it. So if I pop over here to uh, where are we? 
Uh, let's go into set lists, background. Let's try this one. Don't think this is too long. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So let's give it a go at that. And now that I've clicked on it, you'll see it just starts beavering away to in the background. And we'll find out. So if I go back and just show you one that we've prepared earlier. Uh, here's a pretty familiar piece of music. It's for release, of course, but a little guitar arrangement. So the live score has already been converted for this one. Um, and I didn't do anything more than what I just did to that previous one. I, I went up here and clicked on the option and that's it. And just let it take five minutes to, uh, to go through and work it out. Okay, so if I click play on this now, um, what we're going to get is a MIDI playthrough of a PDF file. This is not a, a Sibelius, you know, music XML file in the uh, in the background that it started from. It's just a PDF file that I've uploaded. So it's done all that optical recognition and has created the music XML and MIDI information all by itself. All right, so. can change the instrument here. See if I can find a guitar somewhere. Oops. Okay, the old Microsoft synthesizer it's using um, doesn't always uh, deliver on the, the acoustic guitar nylon um, or various other things. Uh, but nonetheless, those options are there for a few different timbres um, if you want to move things around that way. But separately to uh, just having MIDI playback, which of course down here in the settings we can transpose. If I just uh, quickly demonstrate that. And you can, of course, uh, change the speed, and uh, I think it'll go up to quite ridiculous. So all those standard things that you can do with MIDI file playback, it can do. Um, and you can, of course, uh, download the MIDI file. There's an option there. Download it, bring it into Soundtrap or Pro Tools or something like that. Or you can download the uh, Music XML file. So if I download this one, just as an example, and let's bring it into, I think I've got Sibelius open in the background here, so it'll let me just open it up directly. No, I'll have to go from, from Sibelius itself. But if I open other, and was it gone to the downloads folder probably, here we are. Music XML file, let Sibelius choose everything. Okay. So now we're in Sibelius and we've got a completely editable score that I can do. Um, all those uh, fantastic things I can do with Sibelius. So, you know, and one of those things being listening to uh, proper sampled instruments, which is always a lot nicer, of course. So that is uh, pretty impressive stuff from uh, from a single click. Um, like no need to to learn the. Uh, the integrated format for looking at the PDF and working out where the mistakes it's made are and how to correct them and all that sort of business. So uh, it's pretty cool. So I will just uh, quickly come in here though and check if that one that we tried earlier and actually got through it was the Wagner Bridal March. Is that the one? Yeah. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. It's done. Okay. So we've got a music XML file to download or we have. Is that PDF file in, everything else out, very little effort. Okay, fantastic stuff. So let's move on though, and let's pop back to the PDF view here. So that is the uh, Maestria live score feature. Um, yeah, check it out when you uh, get a trial up and running, it's, it's awesome. Okay, now we can pair audio files to scores and we can also pair YouTube links. On the iPad app as well, uh, you can automate page turns. 
I'm hoping to see that uh, cross-compatible with Music Web in future as well, because it's uh, pretty cool to uh, yeah, bring an audio file in and automate the page turns to some real audio playback, um, as opposed to uh, the MIDI files we just heard, that sort of thing. So if I, for instance, uh, wanted to uh, come into, where are we? Let me just check out my pieces I've got here. This one has a good example of a, uh, an audio file paired to the score. Have a look over here. Let's just hide some of the parts and have a look at the media. There's a little hide option there, just like this one hiding behind our, um, our little watermark there. So there's audio in this score, and let me just make it nice and wide. Uh, it came from a, uh, a Sibelius Sounds audio file export in this case. This is one I used to use uh, when I was working for Avid to uh, demonstrate the, the Sibelius Sounds uh, cap uh, capacity with, uh, with full or orchestral scores. So let me just play this back and we'll have a little listen to the, uh, the quality and thinking about the, the MIDI generator stuff we just heard. And I'm just going to get rid of that because I want to show you something else about that one. Okay. So that obviously wasn't a sync page turn, I did it. Um, but that's just a, a quick demonstration of how you can, uh, can bring in a media file nice and easily uh, just by adding media up here and browsing your computer for uh, a file or uploading a YouTube video link if you want to do it that way as well. So if I, for instance, had uh, a performance of this score um, on YouTube or someone else did and I knew it was going to uh, uh, work well as an example for the score in question, um, if it was something for your students, for instance, um, I can just search for, let's pretend it was written by Beethoven. And let's say ninth should be some big example. Here we go. And you just click on that. And we immediately have a link here for this file. If I click on the audio, I'm just going to mute that out and then play this. I can play it from here or play it from here, it doesn't really matter. Um, if this is active, it's going to play the, uh, the audio from the YouTube file and play the video along with it. All right, um, so I won't get too deep into that, um, but it's uh, pretty easy to find examples and pair them to your scores as and when you need to that way. It's all built, built right into the, uh, the sidebar here. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. Now, uh, let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, page turns. I'll just, I reckon we'll skip um, talking about page turns just so I can uh, jump forward to real audio recordings um, into a score. And if we have time at the end, we'll uh, do a little demonstration on the page turn side of things. Uh, so back to slides for a second. And so what I'm going to do is inside uh, a music score, I'm going to record a take, a score that's part of a project, I should specify, so we want something that multiple students can, uh, can interact with and the teacher as well. Um, so record a take and we'll play it back and then review some, uh, some student recordings within the project uh, as the teacher. Um, so let's see what projects uh, this student's got available to them. We won't do it in this one because I don't think I can play that. So back we go and what projects are available. So we'll go into one of these and it'll find something uh, easy that I can do a bad approximation of and we'll see how we go. So I'm not even going to pretend to sight read that but I'll try and play it from memory if I can. Okay so let me bring up a different view for that one and I think we can show this view here and will we be able to see everything? That's the question. Just turn that off for a second and we'll get rid of this one. There's a take from one I prepared earlier, I think, because I want to show you everything happening uh, all as, as it would the first time around. And I don't actually need to, to add media to the score. Um, if I just hide my, pop myself over here, I think, out of the way, which maybe up there would be better. Um, 
all I really need to do is press record and it's going to prompt me for um, access to the microphone uh, which will happen up here somewhere usually and I'll just allow that to happen and then I should really just be able to record with the default microphone that the, uh, that the computer is using. And assuming I've set up everything correctly uh, beforehand uh, it should all be fine but we'll see. Okay uh, so will we be able to see enough if I put that other view up there as well? Okay let's see what happens. Okay so if I say record we'll get a little count in That's all I'm going to do because we're running short of time. Um, but I'll do a couple of other examples as well. And let's have a little playback of that and see what it sounded like. Alright, okay. that's all I'm going to do. There we go, it even caught my commentary at the end. Um, so that's just capturing from a, um, a desktop microphone, a USB microphone that's just sitting in front of me um, on the desktop. Uh, nothing too fancy, just one of these oops, uh, Rode NT USBs. It is a nice sounding mic though, so it's uh, capturing that quite nicely. Um, but in my uh, video mixing session I do have the bottom end uh, rolled off because it's uh, being used mostly for voice. So it might be losing a bit of the fidelity, but not much. All right, so if I wanted to record another take, uh, I'll just hit record again. And... All right, that's all I'm gonna do. And I forgot that the other one Oh, and I also forgot to stop before I started talking again. I uh, forgot that the other one was still unmuted. So that is uh, um, demonstrating the uh, multi-channel audio capacity that you have within your scores now. So basically, as soon as you start recording another one, if you don't mute that, uh, you're going to hear everything. That might be useful, though, if, if one of them is being used as a, a backing track for another student to improvise over or something like that. So it could be this kind of thing. Okay, um, and then wait for that one to pop up. You can see how quickly this is all happening. It's all going over the cloud, coming back and just uh, uh, giving us this information that we can play around with. But okay. All right, not my best work, but conveys the, uh, the message, hopefully. Um, but then if this uh, student over here in a different account was to go into the same project, if I select it over on the computer as well. Let's go into background guitar once again, uh, Mendelssohn's violin concerto theme, and you know perhaps uh, he wants to do something a bit different. So let's say we're all going to have a go at improvising to uh, this particular student's uh, example. Um, bear in mind uh, at the moment, it's only giving you uh, the take and the, the date and time uh, that, it's, that it's given. Um, I'm going to have a uh, chat with uh, Newsic and suggest that they add the uh, at least the initials from the account or something to that so that it's easy for you to differentiate the uh, students from each other because at the moment you would need to have them uh, edit and, uh, and just pop their initials perhaps at the start to indicate it's theirs. I would also suggest you ask them to download it uh, because there's nothing to stop other students from deleting it uh, if they're all working on the on the same score. Um, that's uh, just something to bear in mind. Um, so these are from the other student though and then this new student, different account remember I'm in uh, Firefox now, the other one was in Microsoft Edge. Why is that not letting me move my talking head? It's alright, can't quite see it but I'm clicking the record button again. And oh, oh this one wants my oops wants my permission, um, just showing everything there so you can see that. So permission to use the Rode USB mic, I'll allow that. Okay, I'm not sure how many of us are out of key then, probably all of them. 
Now here's the next one. And then maybe we'll hear all of those things together and get the beautiful cacophony. <laughs> Alright, so getting a bit silly there because uh, it's all a bit rushed for the purpose of, uh, of demonstration but hopefully uh, that is a pretty clear example of, uh, of how useful that can be and uh, once you start thinking about pairing that with the, uh, the music playback MIDI files from a, a live score generation and mixing all of these things in together I think you'll find there are tons and tons of, uh, of possibilities you can make use of with that. So I think that's almost it. Oh, if I just quickly show you back on the uh, the teacher page, if I jump back to that one. Uh, if we go back in here and projects, background guitar was this one, and which one was it, Mendelssohn? So it's all the same score file in the background. So here we have all of these takes. All right, and the uh, the teacher can review those. Uh, exactly the same way that, that the students could. So maybe we could hear them all at once and it's going to sound good. Some sort of gypsy warm up or something like that. There we go. So uh, back to my slides quickly though. And we'll just make sure we haven't missed any crucial details. The music application does integrate um, to an extent with Music First as well. Um, not all of the features are in there, um, but the, uh, uh, the capacity to record um, multiple things into, uh, multiple takes into scores and that sort of thing uh, is, um, yeah, is available. Um, it doesn't have the, the projects feature as part of um, Music and the, the Music First integration, um, but uh, yeah, bear in mind that that's the first uh, LMS um, integration as far as I'm aware, and hopefully there'll be more on the way soon if you're uh, using other things like Canvas or Google Classroom, that sort of business. All right, um, and that of course means that uh, things that you do for a, a classroom teaching uh, scenario inside music uh, can be linked to the, uh, the gradebook in the LMS in the case of Music First and hopefully others in the future as well and uh, reduce your administrative burdens. Okay, thank you so much. That is uh, probably quite a bit of information to take after five o'clock on a work night. So thank you so much everyone for joining us. Get in touch if you uh, would like to talk uh, about music or anything else music technology as I cited at the beginning of the presentation and the contact details are right there, um, email and phone of course uh, and the cost of music education down here is 650 plus GST uh, per user per year with a 10 user minimum. This page doesn't exist yet but it will soon. Just get in touch with us if, uh, if anything is unclear and yes we'll uh, clarify things very quickly. All right, um, I think that's pretty much it from me. I think we'll wrap it up there and uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you on the next one and talking to you about uh, anything you wish to discuss with us in the near future. Very good, thanks again for coming.